Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be reading your spooky ghost stories. I am so excited. I love ghost stories. I am a believer in ghosts. Let me know in the comments down below if you believe in ghosts, if you don't believe in ghosts. And thank you so much to everyone who sent in their stories. And make sure to dim the lights light some candles, and let's go ahead and get into it. Hey Abigail, so my spooky story is from when I was in college. I was attending the College of Charleston in Charleston, South Carolina, which is one of the most haunted cities in America, behind Savannah, Georgia, and New Orleans, I believe. Ooh, I need to go visit. <laughs> I was in my friend's dorm, and the dorm used to be an orphanage. In the 1900s, a fire broke out and four children died of smoke inhalation. When the building became a dorm, there were always false fire alarms happening and reports of children laughing in the hallways. One night, in my friend's dorm, I was laying on the bed and my friend was across the room. I was taking a nap, but I felt someone's presence right on my face. I thought it was my friend who was trying to scare me. I popped up thinking I would scare them instead, but no one was there. My friend was still across the room. I felt so uneasy. I don't know if I believe in ghosts, but I know I felt uneasy every time I was in that building. There's definitely some sort of presence or energy in that building. And the fact that there was reports of children laughing in the hallways, terrifying. <laughs> Happy Halloween, Abby, my spooky ghost story for you. My grandmother on my mom's side passed decades before I was ever born. Throughout my infancy and young childhood, my mother never spoke of my grandmother or said her name. My grandmother, Karen, and my mom were best friends just like my mom and I are now. One night, as a small child, my mother was walking by my bedroom because she heard me speaking. Opening the door to my room, she sat on my bed and listened to me talk. My eyes are closed and I'm curled under the covers. She finds that I'm having a conversation with someone rather than just talking to myself in my sleep. She finally asked me, Bianca, who are you talking to? Slowly, I rise from my bed to sit upright and open my eyes. I look directly at my mother and respond, Karen. <sighs> I do think that as children, we, we see more things than we do as adults. I think children are just more, I don't know, open-minded. They have that childlike faith and that is so crazy. <laughs> my great great grandparents had a little boy. Some of the exact details have been lost over time, but he was young, able to talk, and still taking naps, so maybe three or four years old. Often, when he would wake from his naps, he would tell his parents about the woman in black who was visiting him in his room. No, 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 no. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> the parents did not think much of the comments and brushed them aside. The young boy continued to wake from his naps, telling his parents about a woman in black who was visiting him. Then one day, his mother went to wake him from his nap when she noticed he was not waking on his own to find he was gone. She could hear a carriage going down the road from the open window in the boy's room, and she and her husband ran outside to see a woman in black in the carriage leaving with their son. What? The woman had lost her child and was in mourning, thus wearing black. She started to notice when nap time was for their son and would crawl through the open window and visit the boy during nap time until the day she took him. What? No. No, 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 no. So this is not a ghost. This is a real person? My great-great-grandparents did get their son back. My grandmother told me this story a number of times. I always thought it would have been terrifying to experience. I also have a short, interesting story. I'm not sure how far back this was, but my great-great-grandmother, she was living in Europe and could not read. Her husband moved to America and then sent for her to come once he was settled. Because she could not read, she accidentally boarded the wrong boat, but the boat she was supposed to board ended up sinking and everyone drowned. It's amazing to think how something like this not only saved her life, but allowed the many generations to come after her. I would not be here if she had not taken the wrong boat that day. I have goosebumps. <laughs> what if the boy had never been rescued? Amazing to think of how the future of my family would have changed with the fate of these two. 
I hope you have a wonderful Halloween. Oh my gosh, that is crazy. It is just so crazy how so many stories lead up to your existence and if one thing would have been different then everything would have been different you know oh my goodness i i have uh, i can't this story is called your friendly house ghost based on real events we moved into the apartment on a late summer day the air had started to cool down already. The perfect temperature to move. It was an old house from the late 19th century. A beautiful three-floor house which has been modernized lately. But the wooden entrance door still creaked when moved or touched. The building still had some traces of its past. One thing we noticed in the first few days were so-called stumbling stones in front of the house. They read, here lived M.E. I'm just going to use initials just for privacy for these people. Um, deported in 1942 and killed. M.N. deported 1943 to Auschwitz, killed 1944. And D.E. disenfranchised and humiliated, escaped to death. Of course we did some research, wanting to know the history of the place we lived in. It used to be a Jewish department store. The family lived above the stores where our apartment was. According to the Stones, the family's father tried to flee and got killed on his way out. At first we joked about him haunting the house now, but the jokes turned to reality really quickly. The first nights we noticed doors opening, not thinking anything of it at first. It's an old building, we thought, but it kept happening, so we checked. The doors opened in directions they shouldn't be physically able to. The ones that were supposed to open in the same direction opened the opposite way. We couldn't just close the doors because of our cats, therefore we put door stops underneath. Obviously, the doors stopped opening and closing. After a little while, we noticed both of our cats sitting in the hallway staring at nothing, as if someone was standing in front of them, mostly at night, but they did in the daytime as well. Once I walked up to my older one sitting there, she was unmoved by my appearance. When I called her name, she woke up of her trance. After a while, things disappeared from their location and a day later being found at the same exact place. Still, we were not making anything out of it. In the hallway, we had a motion sensor light. One night, 3.30 a.m., the light turned on. Oh, it's always like 3 a.m., 3.30 a.m., the worst time. <laughs> we woke up by the sudden light. Our first instinct was to check if one of the cats was walking around. The younger one, laying on our bed, had her head raised in awareness and looked straight into the hallway. Ears pricked, frozen in motion. The older one fast asleep in her cat bed, not noticing anything. We looked at each other, thinking the same thing without saying a word. We turned off the motion sensor and went back to bed. The next days, we started greeting our friendly house ghost as Mr. E when coming home. For a while, Mr. E lived among us unnoticed. Until one night, we had a helium balloon in one room, the leftover of a birthday party. We were late up that night watching a movie. Something caught our attention. The balloon was floating underneath the door frame as if someone was pulling it. The invisible someone was carefully pulling the balloon down to go perfectly underneath the door frame and as it passed, let it float back up. It floated through our hallway. I dared to look at the watch, 3.03 a.m. We threw out the balloon the next day. Soon after, we moved out of the house. Not because of our friendly house ghost. <laughs> I hope you have a great rest of the spooky season. Greetings, Jill. Oh, yeah, I would move too. <laughs> that is so creepy. I was filming last year's fall home decor video and was standing in my entryway filming my table of decor when out of the corner of my eye, I see someone walking in my backyard. My backyard is fenced in, so I thought that was so strange, so I went out to see who or what it was, and it was literally a ghost of this tall, older woman. She was all white with a light blue tinge outlining her. I only saw her for a split second, but it's still pretty creepy. My mom and I are really into spooky stuff like that, and we think it was the woman who used to live in my house. She died a year or two before I moved in, but in a nursing home, so I thought that was strange. She must have been checking out her old place.
I haven't seen her since thankfully because that was so spooky that would be terrifying I think that's one of my worst fears to like just see someone out in my yard like whenever I'm doing dishes at night and I'm just kind of looking out the window. I'm like, I'm always terrified of seeing something. Hi, Abigail. I saw you were looking for creepy stories for spooky season, and I have one that I would like to share. It's quite a long story because it takes place over a few years time. Let me start at the beginning and with some background information. I was six or seven years old, and I have a little sister who is four years younger than me. Because I was often afraid of the dark at night, I got a television in my room. I know most kids get a nightlight, but I got a TV. Our evening ritual was that my sister and I were allowed to watch a video before going to sleep. She always fell asleep earlier, and then one of my parents would put her in her own bed. So it was quite normal that she was in my room a lot. In addition, my sister had a habit of getting out of bed herself when she woke up in the morning. Even when she was still sleeping in the crib, she climbed out with sleeping bag and all. <laughs> Sometimes she would come to me and sometimes she would go to my parents. Now to the night when something scary happened. I was sleeping in my bed, a bed which by the way creaked a lot. No TV on, no lights on, and the window curtains and my bedroom door were closed. Just a normal night. I woke up because I heard ticking. At the time I had a Playmobil set in my room that I always displayed very nicely. It sounded like someone was playing with it, so I said, sister, go away, I want to sleep because the first thing that crossed my mind was that she had gotten out of bed again and had gone to play in my room. But then I woke up a little more and realized it was dark. She had never just come into my room in the middle of the night. And when she did come to me, she always woke me up instead of just going to play. Anyway, it felt wrong. I looked at the place where the ticking came from and I saw a dark figure sitting by my toys. However, it did not see me. I froze completely and I thought if I close my eyes and go back to sleep, it would be gone tomorrow. But before I could close my eyes, I apparently moved a little because my bed creaked. Oh no. <laughs> the figure turned with a jerk and looked straight into my eyes. They weren't human eyes I saw, they looked like cat eyes, yellow with narrow pupils. And no, we didn't own a cat, only dogs and they slept downstairs. My breathing quickened and I was able to move again. I got up and crawled to the other side of my bed because that's where my light switch was. As I did this, I did not break eye contact with this figure, which in turn floated out of my window. Again, the curtains were drawn and the window was closed. I turned my head away for a moment because I couldn't find the light switch and when I turned back, the figure was gone. I immediately got out of bed and went to my parents where I told the story completely upset. This convinces me it wasn't a dream. I got out of bed right after it happened and didn't go to sleep first. I don't remember how the night went on, whether I still slept in my own bed or not. All I remember is that my parents told me not to tell my sister this because otherwise I would scare her. So I think they dismissed my story as a nightmare. But there is one more detail. As I described earlier, I always displayed my Playmobil set nicely. The day after this happened, the dolls were on the floor and everything was mixed up. That means it's real. <laughs> that means it's not a dream. Oh no no. <laughs> Maybe this is true, but I have my doubts. Fortunately, I never saw this figure again. However, I did experience moments when I suddenly got scared in my room, even when it was the middle of the day. For example, I would have music on and I was dancing carefree when suddenly a feeling came over me that I had to leave the room. I'm not sure if this happened because I saw the figure or if it started then. At least I haven't talked to my parents about it anymore. But the story doesn't end here. We go a few years further in time. My parents are now divorced and I live in another house. Although I have always believed in the paranormal, I have never experienced strange things until I was 15 years old. I suddenly became terrified in my room for no apparent reason. It happened more and more often when I was asleep that I started to have real life nightmares. They were real nightmares because I always woke up in bed, but they felt 10 times more lifelike than any other dream I've ever had. These nightmares always took place in my room. I would dream of an evil identity, which I could not see, but which would come for me, and I only felt an absolute terror. I wanted to scream for help, but I couldn't move, and no sound would come out of my mouth. That made the identity even angrier. Once I dreamed that I could half move, it felt like all my limbs were asleep, fell out of bed and crawled to the door with this identity sitting right behind me. 
I have never been more scared and became more and more anxious to go to sleep even with all the lights on. I even asked my mother a few times in the middle of the night, completely upset and in tears if I could sleep in her room. This went on for a while until it finally subsided. But all in all, this time lasted at least a few months in which I would experience these lifelike nightmares four to six times a week. Oh my goodness. During this period, I really thought that I was possessed and that there really was a ghost in my room. That room is also always much colder than the rest of the house for some reason, which only reinforced my suspicion. I'm also a big fan of the show Ghost Adventures and they often mention this. But then came my eureka moment. I don't remember how or when, but I came across the term sleep paralysis at some point. When I heard the definition of this, all the puzzle pieces fell into place. This was it. As I said, the nightmares, which I can now identify as sleep paralysis, lessened, but they weren't completely gone. I've had sleep paralysis quite a few more times in a short amount of time, but now that I know what it is, I can say to myself during such an episode, it's okay, you have sleep paralysis, take a deep breath and it'll be over in no time. It still feels like there's an evil identity right next to me and I still feel terror, but the worst panic is gone. I've done this a few times and it now happens only sporadically. I am now 28 years old, and the last time I had sleep paralysis was about two and a half years ago. Now, I also suspect that what I experienced as a little girl was also sleep paralysis. I felt the same panic, and I wasn't able to move for a while. The only difference is that I did see an identity then and continued to see it when I could move again. I'm not sure if you have any experience with sleep paralysis. If not, I hope you never will. Thanks for reading my story, and happy spooky season, and vlogtober with love, Anne. Whew. Yes, so I have had sleep paralysis one time in my life. It was in 2015 and I saw someone sitting at the foot of my bed and it felt so incredibly real and I remember just trying so hard to speak to that person and for some reason I was trying to say, Matt, why did you follow me home? I don't know a Matt, like I don't know why like his name was Matt. It was just the weirdest thing, but I I do know during that time in my life I was under a lot of stress. So I think maybe the stress like had caused the sleep paralysis, but it is so terrifying. I I cannot imagine having as many episodes of sleep paralysis as you have had. I would just be so scared to go to sleep. Hi Abigail, you might recognize my email from last year's spooky story entry, but I'm here again to share an experience that I didn't go through, but my uncle did. Back in the early 2000s, a while after my brother was born, my uncle happened to walk around my neighborhood, the neighborhood I live in now, and came across this pretty steep slope leading up to a cluster of houses. This slope still lies a few streets down the road and I do pass by it. On the top of the slope, directly opposite the cluster of houses stood a huge house almost a manor. Huge walls guarded the house, vines climbing up almost every little area of concrete available. Wired fences stood on top of the guarding walls, blocking everyone and everything out. A rusted black gate with creepy patterns allowing people to look in. My uncle decided to take a closer look at the house, walking towards it and holding the bars. Honestly, not sure why he did that, but right after that, he heard wailing, a woman wailing a name coming from inside the house. My uncle started to leave feeling uneasy. As he turned, a black figure stood right behind those rusted gates. This made him start running away from the house, not looking back. To this day, there have been reports about a wailing woman from the cluster of houses opposite the huge house, but nothing has been found. My uncle still claims to have seen the figure. He tells the story almost every October. Happy October, Abigail. P.S. was listening to Cardigan by Taylor Swift writing this. Love, Michaela. Yes, we love Swifties. <laughs> I've had a lot, and I mean a lot, of spooky stories. But for today, I have this particular story that nearly gave me a heart attack. So here's the story. I'll title this one as The Clock That Loves to Prank. Our family had a very short grandfather kind of clock. I've seen it since I was born. I'd rather call it a pendulum clock, but my grandparents loved to call it the grandfather clock. They had a lot of stories of how it originated or how it came to them, but it wasn't as old as they were claiming. The markings on the clock gave it all away, unfortunately. I, for one, loved it, and for two, no matter how new it was, it was definitely an antique. 
I wouldn't be lying when I say I got pulled to it as a child. When I was still very young, it got locked up in our storeroom. Things were perfectly normal ever since. However, in 2019, my grandmother finally took the initiative to bring it out and display it somewhere because my grandfather loved it. The clock was damaged and it wouldn't work anymore, so we kept it on the showcase at the landing right before our roof. The system of this clock was you had a key and you'd have to wind it up so that it was enough to power to operate. My grandmother did this every day, but the clock didn't show proper time and it would go off at odd times. I still don't get why she did that though, since it was pretty useless. Anyways, fast forward to August 2020, when sadly in a very short period of time, my grandfather's health deteriorated and he passed away on the 12th of the month. To say I was shattered would be an understatement. I knew that he loved the clock and I would go to the roof every day just to spend some time standing in front of it thinking of him. That is, until I finally observed the odd behavior of the clock whenever I went near. The second's hand was stuck at a place and would feebly vibrate there with every passing second trying its mightiest to move forward with no success. However, it seemed as though whenever I went near it, it only got faster. This happened often, if not always. The interval of the vibration would no longer be a second, but shorter than that. Me being imaginative decided to overlook it because if I didn't, I would overthink and probably kill myself with thoughts of what might happen. I reduced the number of times I'd visit it. The pendulum would very faintly ding at an hour's interval representing the wrong time, and soon that stopped too. By this time, my grandmother had stopped winding it too, so there was no chance that it could operate on its own. Everything was back to normal. Last year, during late October, on such a normal day, I was alone at home. My grandmother had gone to visit my aunt and both my parents were at work. It was nearly four o'clock in the evening and I decided to go to the roof, but not before switching on all the lights in the house, cause you know. I was halfway through the stairs when all of a sudden I heard it, a faint ticking coming from upstairs. As I climbed up the stairs with the intention to investigate, it grew louder and guess what? faster. The clock was working just like earlier, only stuck at a particular time, 4.02 p.m. and 7 seconds. I could see the scared reflection of my face on the glass door of the clock as I reached the landing. I quickly went to the roof and consoled myself that my grandmother must have wound it up sometimes and it was running all along, but my heart knew the truth all too well. The sun was already a dim shade of orange and it was beautiful. Nearly five minutes later, I realized that the clock had stopped. I took my time singing and dancing to songs of Taylor Swift till it was too dark to see properly because what else can make you feel strong in such a situation? Good thinking. <laughs> As the sun finally said goodnight for the day, I decided to go back downstairs and watch some TV so that I don't feel quite as alone. As I entered the shaded landing, now drowned in a certain gloom and came nearer to it, the clock somehow started to tick all over again. I ran downstairs, but it only got more pronounced. I was downstairs when it struck me. I had to close the door to the roof. I had to go upstairs near that clock again. I took some deep breaths and started singing You Belong With Me by Miss Grammy at the top of my lungs and I ran upstairs. It was still ticking. My throat was so dry at this point that I could sing no more, so I drew up my bravest expression and passed by the clock and closed the door locking it. I want to say something here. The key used to be kept in front of the clock. As soon as I was done, I decided to run down, but I was not even three to four stairs down. Ding, 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 ding. The pendulum of the clock swinged. I ran downstairs, nearly crying and thinking, what is happening? As I finally finished climbing down the stairs, there was a loud bang, as if someone had hit the shade of the landing. I was so upset that I was on the verge of tears. I came back to my room, deciding to call my friend just to overcome the fact that I was completely alone with a clock that was savoring the taste of teasing me just like my grandfather did. I called my best friend, but guess what? She didn't pick it up, of course. All along, the clock kept ticking and the pendulum kept ringing every now and then. It was nearly 7 p.m. when I decided to, God knows why, face my fears and come near the stairs. Somehow, the clock decided it was done teasing me as it stopped ticking. That was a relief. It kind of reminded me of my grandpa. He used to stop teasing after a point too. I went back to my room calling my mom to ask her how late she'd be. Now note that I never do this and I'm always pretty happy to be home alone because I get all the time to write. Yes, writing is my hobby. 
She was obviously concerned, but I told her everything was okay and I wasn't just feeling it today and was absolutely bored. She confirmed that she'd be back within half an hour. Great, I thought to myself, another half an hour of painful anticipation and I'll be done. Time passed at the slowest speed ever and I went near the main door exactly overhead which stood the clock. I was scared, yes, but to stand near that door so that I could easily run out of the house in case anything happens was comforting. Now that the ticking had stopped completely, the house was abnormally silent. Five minutes later, my mother returned. Everything has been normal ever since. Fast forward to the present. The clock has been removed recently to where it was kept locked up with care like earlier. And although I love my grandpa and that clock reminded me of him, although it might just have been a tearing it up, which is a reference to my favorite podcast, Unsolicited Advice, <laughs> it's better off stored with care somewhere not in front of my eyes. The clock ticking and then the bang that you heard, there's definitely something going on here. <laughs> I have brought my husband Harold here to read one of the stories for Oh, you. we're rolling already, okay. Yes. <laughs> hmm, that is scary. What is? All these purchases. <laughs> That's not true. Okay, spooky story. One late evening, I was putting my two dogs out for the night. Our front door opened up to a split entry with stairs going downstairs and up. Within the door, there was a tall window that was made in a way the light could shine through, but not be able to see through oh. clearly. What's wrong? That is not part of it. As I closed the door, I saw through the glass a young woman wearing a white turtleneck and black knee-length skirt walking across the hall in her basement. Days later, my brother would claim to see the same thing. This sounds really familiar to the story that we have. Oh, like your from family. Our family. Yeah. yeah. When we spoke to our mother about it, she merely paused before saying, Looks like grandma came to visit. It was then that I thought back to the one picture we have of our grandmother. It was her senior picture and that she wore a white turtleneck sweater. So this could have been her grandma. Yeah, sounds like it. Ooh. You know, this happened to us. Like we have, uh, not a grandma, but someone who's wearing white. I have not seen it. I just heard my name before. Well, thank you, Harold. Of course. <laughs> Bye now. <laughs> oh.